Hello everyone. Hope everybody is doing well. Today, as my weekend exercise, I was looking into the something new and I had this idea that I should spend some time with the Bloom, the new large language model from Big Science. And I really wanted to work on this model to just check it out, its performance, and see how it performs against other lang large language models such as GPT-2 Mini or Medium, as well as the GPT Neo. So today was very good exercise that I looked into this Bloom model because first it's a large language model having about 176 billion parameters. You can say that as of now it's I think top one or two model which is really crossing the 100 billion parameter mark. So I decided to run an experiment using this Bloom large language model and test its performance at Google Colab just by creating the new notebook. I decided to use the Bloom model card at Hugging Face and I decided to implement the code. And while I was implementing the code in the Google Colab, I met few problems. And it took two or three problems to solve and finally the code was ready. This video is really very good exercise for those who would want to learn that how they can just looking at a model or trying a model or the testing a model at Hacking Face and open the notebook or Python IDE and start writing few lines of code, download the model, instantiate the tokenizer as well as the model object, give your input prompt, process it, tokenize it, send the tokenization data to your model and generate your output language. Everything is covered in this Jupyter Notebook and I'm sure that anyone who is going to look into this tutorial has a thing to learn. So let's get ourselves started. So this Bloom model is the latest one and it's an upgrade to the previous one which has had about 130 billion parameters while the new one has about 176 billion parameters. So we are using the latest one and here we can have few more tests to start with live phase and the model is already loaded so it will take quite fast time but if you are trying to use this thing at the very first time you might see it will take a little more time to load live phase not a uh, as you could see that for the sentence completeness this model is doing quite well mathematical function we could say add one with two and let's see if it try to understand the question if once you look a mathematical kind of question is try to answer in a function that i have seen so for example python code 2 it might not be able to understand because thinks it's a sequence and if you could say python code 2 tell which string is bigger there you go so you could say that model is ready however i do not see that this model is ready for the prime time and we could actually compare this model head to head with other open source models such as GPT-2 and if you would want to compare it you can look into the the uses of this model so you could see that these are the tags so it's a transformer it means it's uh, this model can support 48 languages while it's, it's a transformer model let's open the text generation and if we look into the GPT-2, so this is the GPT-2 model already has a 11 million download last month. It means it has been used massively. And here, if you would say live is very first time, it might take some time to load. And comparing to here with the Bloom latest one, you could see that the GPT-2 is definitely way more ahead in this space. While comparing same, we can use the GPT near 2.7 billion billion parameters. And here you could say again, life is. So I'm asking GPT Neo to tell me a story about cat and dog. If I ask the same question to GPT 2, similar to that, if I will ask the same question to Bloom 
as you could see that definitely the bloom needs more time to be paired with other available language translation models here as you could see that there is at the very top you would see that using transformer so if you click on this tab you will see that it tells you that how you could start this experimentation in the google collab so here is the transformer so we have to implement this code in our jupyter notebook in this google collab environment i will connect the environment and made sure that we do have access to gpu if it is available because this is the free session of collab connected let me run time let's see if gpus are available we are lucky that we do have the gpu available it means we can get things working next we can see that if transformers are available if it is not found then So now we have the transformers installed in this environment looking into the code as you could see that this is asking us to import these methods so from transformers we are auto tokenizer and we are also using the auto model so let's take the model these two model and tokenizer now loading the tokenizer and after the tokenizer object is ready we are going to use the auto model method and access this bloom 1b7 model the bloom latest model is quite big about 3.21 gig looks like our model is downloaded so here is our model we can just and here you could see that that's the model basically the model configuration as well as the layers it just tells you what what it is we can also look into the model and see if there is a class object available with this model see if the class is available okay here is the transformer bloom and one more thing you could validate is that i think if you start to say what is its name it will tell you that this is the bloom model at this point we can set our seed so we can say set seed and we can give a number and let me see if I didn't call. Okay, so sorry, I was so set seed is the method we need. Now we will be able to set the seed for our experiment. We also need to make sure that at this point that our environment does have access to torch. So import torch, and we can also set the torch dot set default. It's going to tensor type so set default we can say torch dot and we want to set the CUDA type because we are using the Google environment and we have made sure that CUDA GPU support is available. So we have set our environment to use the tensor as the float tensor for the CUDA specific environment. Now we can set our prompt so we can say text prompt is that's our text prompt now we need to tokenize it so we can use this tokenizer object which we have created so this is a tokenizer object and if you look into the tokenizer object it actually takes our text prompt return as you could see we are using the return tensors and just use the point and two zero and this will be our input tokens let's run this so this text which we have just set it up as a prompt is going to be processed by the tokenizer and it's going to generate the input tokens once input tokens are available we can actually see what these input token look like and as you could see that each element in our prompts 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 these tokens are generated along with their attention mask now we need to use our model so this is our model model.generate here is our model.generate so if you want to learn more about the generate function you can just use the command button and then you can mouse hover and it will tell you the function definition related with generate so it takes the input and various other parameters so let's give the input so we can pass these input tokens so these are our input tokens max 
So this is the max length that gave it to 200. Top K means select the result set, which is the top K equals zero and temperature give to 0 0.5. That's, these are the property related to your transformer and this result will be our result sample. Let's run it. And it's a very good error what we have seen because if you see here that we have CPU and CUDA, they both are currently in use in our experiment. So the mistake which I have done here is that because I lost the track and I imported the tor torch later and I, this, I set up the tensor type as the CUDA later. By the time we have already imported this tokenizer and the model. So that's the mistake we have done and that caused this problem to us. So what we could do is that we can go ahead and reset this environment and we can reload these two models so that our tokenizer and the model will be correctly in the same environment where we are expecting. So we are going to take this cell and we are going to move it just after here. Okay, so that's the only one big change we are going to do. So let's restart the runtime. Runtime is restarted. Make sure we have access to GPU. So we have all three things available here. Let's see if the transformers library, which we have installed early, earlier is available in this environment. It is there, so we do not really need to install it. Let's import the transformers library so that we can get the functions such as auto tokenizer, auto model and the set seed. After that, we are going to import the torch and now we are going to set the tensor type correctly. Now tokenizer is ready. Now let's get the model object to take a look at the model class. Okay, and it's a bloom model. Now we are going to set up the seed for this experiment. We can go ahead and clean this. Let's set up the text prompt, input tokens, whatever input tokens are here. At this point, I will keep this error in the memory and run this code again. And we hit the second problem. So after we solved our first problem related with CPU and GPU, two separate devices are used in our experiment and now we are getting this error is that object has no attribute logits and reason this problem is that the model what we are using here is actually does not have the model generation utilities so that it can be used for language generation it means because the model type which we are using is the bloom model what we actually need is that the blue model for the language generation. So we have to look into the, the classes available with the transformer related to modeling. So let's for let's look for the, the language model. So what we will do is that we will look into look for auto model for and now you could see here that there is a casual language modeling. So this method we are going to use at this time. So let's use this and rather than using this auto model here, we are going to use from pre-trained. This is the from pre-trained and this is what we are going to use and now we will call here model ln. So this is for language modeling. So we will remember. Okay, so we do have very limited memory. So we hit exception here. So let's make sure that our runtime is restarted. So it means that we do have all the memory back. In that scenario, we are not going to load this model. We are only going to load this model. So let's take a look and see the transformers are available. Importing these methods from the transformer library. Importing torch, next tokenizer, because we need to use it. And we are not going to import this one rather than we are going to use this model allen and let's use this one and because of that we are not going to hit the error because you know our ram is really very small and it's a free machine so we can't complain now i will leave this previous two as it is let's see here 
class so transformer model bloom modeling bloom and here you see model mod bloom model for the casual lm and and bloom for casual lm so okay let's set the seed text prompt is our text prompt tokenizer had no problem to work earlier our tokenizer is working now i will be keeping this previous error as it is and i will be using this model underscore lm here and passing everything as it is let's see now it means result sample is generated we have solved these two error now we have to decode this answer so this is our result sample so we could say so that was our tokenizer so tokenizer had something called the tokenizer dot decode this is our result sample i will show you what result sample really look like as you could see here that result sample is stored in this method it means that our result is inside here so what we could do because uh, if you had multiple text prompt then result will be generated in the multiple of these items in this list so our answer should be that result sample of zero so this is our actual result sample so wherever we want to decode we have to use the result sample zero so decode we are using the result sample zero so this is what we need to decode and we can pass the pattern if there are any new line we make sure that everything is truncated properly so i will give you this method so this is called the truncate before pattern here and here we are passing the pattern so this is just a parameter for this method decode so this is our tokenizer decode that's the result and what we could do is that we could print this result so let's print it what is the life in first century the answer is the life is a constant struggle the struggle is between the good and evil and that is the answer you are getting from the model which we have used here and if we take the same sentence which we have here let's go back to this bloom say try as you could see that that's where everything is start and this is the big answer which we have got based on our experiment so this is how you can actually create a very simple exercise in google collab to load the latest bloom model and perform your text generation by using the appropriate the CUDA environment then making sure that your model is correctly loaded for the language modeling and finally if everything goes well then you will be able to generate your results let me save this so the Jupyter notebook which we have worked in this exercise is going to be available in my public github so I'm exporting from Google environment to my public github repo and the experimentation results are available along with error so at the end it was a great exercise had few things to solve and while solving there was an opportunity to learn i hope you have enjoyed it i do appreciate your time and i'm looking forward to seeing you in my next video until then thank you so much